Hello friends, welcome to this full moon in the sign of Cancer in January, the first full moon of 2022. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling all the vibes. Maybe it's also because I am a fellow Cancerian. It is my sun and my rising sign. If you are if you are unaware of your sun, moon, and rising sign, there are so many um, quizzes online. If you just type it on in the internet, you can figure it out there. You will need your time of date or <laughs> time of birth, obviously the date, um, and where you were born to figure out the most accurate um, rising and moon sign because your sun sign is like the sign that you, most of us typically know, um, like the month, you know, like the month, month sign, um, this horoscopes that you see in the, um, newspapers, at least when we were younger, at least when I was younger, that's how it was. So that will help you give you more, more of an accurate reading for each full moon, each new moon, all that good stuff. But I'm not going to dive in deep to that because this will be a very long video if we do so. All right. So in this video, you will find the energies of this specific full moon. Um, some ideas you can use for your own personal ritual. I'm going to give you some correspondence, um, an archangel, a goddess to call upon and an essential oil to use. Okay. And ooh, maybe we'll do a one card reading. I don't have my cards beside me though. So we'll see how long this video goes on. But if not, I will be doing like a real like a quick um like on my instagram or on my tiktok for a specific reading for this new moon all right guys so let's dive right in the full moon in the sign of cancer i'm not too sure if any of you have friends that are cancers families that are, families that are cancers but if you do i want you to just like stop and like really think about and feel into what their typical energy is like because i feel like a cancer is like a cancer like we just know cancers they are known to be um very intuitive they're a very intuitive sign because they are ruled by the moon and the moon is the ruler of our emotions so that being said they're also emotional beings they can be moody they can be literally the word crabby um but also very intuitive they are they like the sense of security with their emotions and their feelings and they also like all things that you know kind of make us feel comforted um so right now is a really good time to spend time with your emotions spend time with your feelings especially those really deep down buried ones they might be surfaced at this time they're being surfaced for a reason because they are needing to be felt okay guys so also it is at 4 48 p.m mountain standard time i'm almost for sure it was p.m i didn't write that down but i'm almost for sure it was the p.m um so that would be 6 48 eastern standard time check the time zone for your specific area but it's not as it doesn't matter as much as the new moon. You can do your rituals a day before and then a few days following after. Um, all right, so gear up because you may be getting all the feels. Cancers are also connected with the home life, family, um, all things domestic, that sort of thing, and where you belong, your past, because cancers are ruled by the fourth house and that was all of like the fourth house energy, okay? So crabs are tuning into the energy of any given moment so something negative happens which in result if something negative happens it can result to them being like a little emotional a little sensitive a little crabby so i want to give you this like brief kind of overview of like how to describe the crabby like energy okay because i heard this and i was like that is so true so if you think about crabs um you know they're like hard on the outside super mushy gushy on the inside which um, I can definitely see and relate to that aspect. Um, but like the actual creature of a crab, you know, like they live by the ocean and, you know, they're crawling around, they're crawling around, but they never know when they're going to get hit by waves. So they never know when they're going to get taken out. So that, you know, that being said, that's why they have this hard exterior shell because they don't know what's going to hit them. And they're so, they, they're also known, they can be known to be like an insecure sign. They're one of the most insecure sign, if not the most insecure sign, which makes so much sense. 
Um, and But that is the reason why is because they never know what's coming next. They never know if it's going to get hit by a wave or if it's going to be like smooth sailing and they're good. So they have like this hard exterior shell because they don't know what's coming next, literally. And this is what causes the insecurity in it. So I thought that specific um, analogy was beautiful for the cancer sign. Um, Okay, so this full moon is requiring requiring us to look at our deep feelings, our emotions, but it may offer like a very go-getter, like let's go get them kind of energy towards attending to those feelings instead of just surfacing, like just allowing them to sit there and then maybe meditating and whatever, right? And so this actually can be like, okay, let's do something about this. This energy is like, let's do something about these feelings. Let's release them. Let's feel them. Let's... Do, it, do whatever we have to do to just like get them out of us so we can move on and not have them linger in our subconscious and be manifesting with these feelings and maybe possibly creating more of these feelings or attracting more of those feelings. Um, okay, so the planetary alignment may also have an effect on how we go about it. So Pluto is in conjunction with the sun and Pluto is the planet of death, rebirth, regeneration, control and the underworld. All right. So this moon is giving us time to get real with ourselves and how, and about how we feel. It can also be, um, an opening to like be open to ending bonds, certain bonds, um, any patterns or behaviors and anything that is like those, like anything. And all of what I just mentioned that is not serving you there they're not going to be in your favor. So like the, you know, bonds, like the relationships that we just, they're no longer serving us. Like we don't feel in alignment with them. You know, maybe there's just giving and there's no take, like there doesn't feel like that connection like there once was, or maybe, you know, there's somebody's outgrowing somebody, um, and you just don't feel connected. So maybe this is time to just mentally and emotionally be okay with moving on from that. Um, that relationship or friendship. And that doesn't mean that you have to go and verbally say like, I'm done with you and like go on this huge rant. You don't necessarily have to do that. If you would like to communicate with them and have a conversation, that's great. Go ahead. But like just emotionally and mentally, um, be aware of this and like work through those feelings so you can process it and then kind of move on. Um, so those feelings may be offered to us right now. All right, so just be aware of that. And Pluto is also a ruler of obsessive thoughts and power struggles. So bringing that into like the conversations, be cautious of that as well if you do want to have those conversations um, with those people, okay? So that is like the biggest thing that, that we're being faced with with this full moon on January 17th, 2022. Um, so just become, you know, just notice the feelings, let them arise, write them down, do whatever you have to do to just like let that shit out because it's not serving you. Um, if you are feeling more emotional at this time, this is why. If you're feeling more intuitive, listen to those intuitive hits. What are they telling you? Um, you know, write that down as well and keep that piece of paper and, um, maybe you're like, this has nothing to do with me or I don't understand where this is coming from. Write it down anyway, because more often than not, it can show up in our life down the road. And we're like, oh, that makes so much sense. Um, that's why I was feeling that way. Or that's why I got all these thoughts and all these, you know, kind of emotions come up for me. All right. So that is what I'm going to leave it at for this full moon. Um, I'm going to give you the correspondings and correspondence and then some things that you can do for your ritual if you are wanting to do a little ritual okay um so the goddess you can call upon is diana the roman goddess of the of the hunt and witches the archangel you can call upon is archangel zad kiel the angel of compassion and forgivingness and the essential oil you can use is patchouli is which is it lifts your energy and your spirits all right, so those are the correspondence you can use this specific full moon. And I'm going to give you a little ritual that you can do. You know, there are just like some basic things, like you can have a nice hot bath, um, just like take some time to reflect and go inward and just relax, but do something that is like heated and makes you feel alive. You know, you want to feel like alive at the time of the full moon because we're like just, that's representation of culminations, climaxes. Um possible endings, you know, the, um, 
the harvest, that's the word I'm looking for, the harvest of the, the past two weeks from the new moon. So the harvest of the manifestations that maybe you put in at the new moon and you're starting to see them come to life and to come to fruition. And so now it's time to reap those rewards, soak them in, allow them to be, and to just, ah, uh, you know what I mean? Just like love on them and all of that good stuff. Um, another thing you can do is like go to a hot yoga class. Another really good thing is one-on-one -on -one talks, maybe with all these emotions and feelings that are coming up for you, it would be a good time to, you know, like talk to a therapist, talk to a friend, um, talk to a coach, whatever it is, what, whatever you're feeling called to, to express yourself. But like the communication um, with one-on-one -on -one can be very beneficial at this time as well. But for there, there goes for an actual ritual. You couldn't light a candle. Um, that's usually what I like to do. I like to start off my ritual with lighting a candle. I get everything ready. I get my, my cleanse, my sage ready. Um, my sound bowl. Now that I have a new sound bowl, I love it. I get my cards, my journal. I get a pot of water ready for my, when I burn my, all my stuff. Um, so the first thing what I do is I sit down, like I mentioned, I light a candle. Sometimes I'll put on some music and you can write down some things that are no longer serving you. So you can write down patterns, habits, um, behaviors that you want to release, especially now being, you know, the full moon of cancer. It's a really, really good time to release those emotions and patterns and habits and behaviors. So do it if you have the time and the opportunity because it will serve you. And if you've never done a full moon ritual, you might be like, okay, like I can just do it in my head, but it's not the same. I promise you it's not the same. I used to think the same thing until I started doing them. And it's so symbolic. It's so freeing and it's absolutely amazing. Just do it. Just do it. Um, okay, so then write all that down, get it all out. And then you can write down some forgivingness. If you have somebody that you need to forgive or you are holding on to tension through yourself like you are guilty for some reason of, of all different vicinities write that down write down why you forgive yourself um you know write down why you're upset and then all of the people and so with cancer a lot of it can go to like childhood because like they they do have like from the past kind of energy and you know a lot of the family the like home life energy comes with cancer that's what they're <clears throat> that's what they're known as okay so anybody that has been upsetting you or that you're holding onto from when you were a kid, write, th write all of that down. Um, you can go as in depth or as surface level as you would like, or write as much or as little as you want, depending on the time, um, get all that shit out. And then we're going to burn it if you can. So I like to burn it over a pot of water on the deck if I can, depending on the weather, if it's not too windy, um, because then it's like, I'm under the moonlight, the beautiful stars. And it's just, it feels so right to do it there. If not, I mean, do it where it's suitable. Um, I'm not going to list any other places, but do it where you feel as comfortable and safe, or you can crumple it up. You can rip it up. Um, whatever you have to do to destroy the piece of paper. Okay. And then when we come back in, I like to do my sage and my cleanse right then and there cleanse all of that energy out that I just released. And then I do a gratitude list. So I bring back up my frequency to feeling thankful for everything that I just released. And then all, all of the things that I do have and the growth that I am going through right now from doing this forgivingness and releasing these patterns and all of that good stuff. And then you can do a meditation. I usually hop on YouTube and find one um, that's calling to me. And then you can do your own little intuitive card reading if you are feeling called to. I typically use my Moonology cards. There's two decks of Moonology manifesting. And then I think the other one's just a Moonology. Um, I think it's just called Moonology. They're both beautiful. They both have, you know, different kind of vibes, different energies. And I love doing my readings for the next two weeks or the next full lunar cycle or what I need, what I'm being called to release as well. So you don't have to do it in those specific orders. Um, but I, the, the journaling I would definitely do in those specific orders. So, um, cause you want to replace with the gratitude once you're done releasing all of what you released. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I had missed. Another thing is cleansing your whole home is really good. It's really good to do it at the time of the full moon. Cleansing your crystals. So if you want to put your crystals outside under the moonlight and get them all charged, same with your cards. I have. I don't think I've actually charged all of my cards under the moon. I think I did it with one deck because I heard this in, um, in one of the courses I'm doing. So I thought that was pretty cool. So you feel free to charge your oracle or tarot cards under the moon. Definitely check the weather. You don't want them to get rained on or anything like that. 
Um, some people make moon water as well. So leaving water under the moonlight, but in a glass jar, not plastic. We don't want to use plastic. Make sure it's glass. And yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. And I hope you guys all enjoyed this full moon reading energy, energy reading. I'm a little bit dyslexic lately. I don't know why, but it is what it is. And I am going to be doing journaling prompts. So check in the description or in the comments below for that link to access the journaling prompts if you would like to do those as well. All right, guys, I wish you all a happy full moon and we'll chat later. Bye.